Have you ever wondered why medieval armies were often so small? Despite the sweeping battles and epic sieges, the reality was quite different. But what caused this limitation? Was it a lack of resources, strategy, or something else entirely? Join us as we explore the surprising reasons behind the small size of medieval armies and discover the fascinating world of medieval warfare. One of the main reasons for the small size of medieval armies was the system of feudalism that dominated European society at the time. In this system, lords granted land to their vassals in exchange for loyalty and military service. The vassals, in turn, would provide a certain number of soldiers to their lord for a specified period of time, usually 40 days per year. This meant that lords could only rely on a limited number of soldiers, and their vassals could only provide a limited number of troops. Moreover, the resources available to medieval lords were often limited. In fact, many lords struggled to provide even the basic necessities for their soldiers, such as food, clothing, and weapons. This made it difficult to maintain large armies for extended periods of time. To illustrate this point, let's look at the Battle of Hastings, which took place in 1066 and was one of the most significant battles in English history. The English army, led by King Harold Godwinson, had around 7,000 soldiers, while the invading Norman army, led by William the Conqueror, had around 10,000 soldiers. Despite being outnumbered, the English fought bravely and nearly won the battle. However, their limited resources and lack of reinforcements ultimately led to their defeat. Another reason for the small size of medieval armies was the difficulty of maintaining large armies over long distances. Medieval armies had to rely on local resources and the goodwill of the local population. This made it difficult to sustain large armies for extended periods of time, especially in enemy territory. Let's look at the Crusades, which were a series of religious wars fought between Christian Europe and Muslim forces in the Middle East. The Crusaders often had to march for weeks or even months to reach their destination, and they had to rely on local resources to sustain themselves. This meant that they had to constantly forage for food and supplies, which made them vulnerable to attack from enemy forces. Moreover, the Crusaders often had to contend with harsh terrain and extreme weather conditions, which further reduced their numbers. Finally, the small size of medieval armies was often a deliberate strategic choice. In many cases, medieval commanders preferred to fight with smaller, more agile forces that could move quickly and strike at vulnerable targets. This was especially true in the early Middle Ages, when the focus was on raiding and pillaging rather than pitched battles. Let's look at the Vikings, who were feared raiders and warriors from Scandinavia. The Vikings often sailed in small ships and attacked coastal towns and villages, where they could quickly amass wealth and supplies. They were known for their hit-and-run tactics and their ability to strike quickly and then disappear into the sea. The Vikings were also skilled at using the terrain to their advantage, such as hiding in forests or attacking from high ground. Small, highly effective forces in medieval warfare were the Swiss mercenaries. The Swiss were renowned for their proficiency with the pike, a long spear that allowed them to form tight formations and repel enemy charges. The Swiss pikemen were often hired as mercenaries by other European powers, and they were highly sought after for their discipline and effectiveness. The Swiss mercenaries were able to defeat much larger armies thanks to their superior tactics and training. Let's examine some particular battles in more detail to demonstrate the tactics and strategies that enabled medieval armies, despite their limitations, to accomplish impressive military accomplishments. The Battle of Crecy 1346, the Battle of Crecy was a significant battle of the Hundred Years' War between England and France. The English army, led by King Edward III, was outnumbered by the French army by a ratio of nearly three to one. However, the English were able to use their longbowmen to devastating effect, raining arrows down on the French army and disrupting their formations. The French knights, who were heavily armored and reliant on close combat, were unable to break through the English lines. In the end, the English were victorious, despite being vastly outnumbered. The Battle of Agincourt 1415. The Battle of Agincourt was another significant battle of the Hundred Years' War. Once again, the English were heavily outnumbered by the French, but they were able to use their longbowmen to great effect. The English archers were able to fire arrows at the French from a distance, causing chaos and confusion in their ranks. 
the French knights, who were heavily armored and reliant on close combat, were unable to get close enough to the English to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. In the end, the English were victorious, despite being vastly outnumbered. The Battle of Bannockburn, 1314 The Battle of Bannockburn was a significant battle of the Scottish Wars of Independence. The Scottish army, led by Robert the Bruce, was vastly outnumbered by the English army, led by Edward II. However, the Scots were able to use their knowledge of the terrain to their advantage, positioning themselves on a boggy, marshy field that made it difficult for the English to maneuver. The Scots were also able to use their spearmen to great effect, forming tight formations that were able to repel the English charges. In the end, the Scots were victorious, despite being vastly outnumbered. In conclusion, the reasons of the small size of medieval armies was due to a combination of factors, including feudalism, limited resources, logistics and supply lines, and strategic choices. It's important to remember that medieval commanders had to work with what they had and make the most of their limited resources. They often relied on tactics and technology to make up for their smaller numbers, and they were able to achieve remarkable feats of military prowess despite their limitations. By understanding the challenges faced by medieval armies, we can gain a deeper appreciation for the complexities of warfare throughout history. Our channel, The History of the Ancient World, will be releasing more videos on medieval history and other historical facts, so make sure you are subscribed and hit the notification bell.